All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about my top four wilderness blades for 2023. Now, I don't do as much outdoor or wilderness content as I used to, and that's because I don't spend as much time as I would like outside, but I still wanted to provide the list for the top knives that I think are worth buying or acquiring in 2023 um, for wilderness use and applications. We're also going to throw a bonus blade in at the end, and as always, guys, these knives are not brand new, and most of them are repeat customers or repeat um, recommendations and that's because when I choose knives I'm not looking at you know the hottest or latest or greatest blades I want knives that I personally have field time with or dirt time with and knives that I can personally recommend through experience and use that are reliable and proven performers so there aren't going to be any new or cool blades unfortunately um, you know there are definitely new blades coming out every year but these guys are proven and reliable performers and that's really what I'm after I don't like recommending things that don't have a great track record okay now let's talk about these top four so first one just because it's on the top is going to be the se6 now mine looks just a little bit different because i reprofiled and laid that edge back to 17 degrees per side this is a total preference you do not have to do that the factory edge is perfectly fine i will say i am a fan of the laid back edge it certainly is a much wider bevel so you'll have to keep that in mind but it is very slicey and it does a fantastic job and i think ultimately with a thinner per side angle does a better job at complementing the full flat grind of this blade now of course if you do lay back the edge like i did durability will be lessened but with 1095 especially this differentially heat treated 1095 you're not really going to likely notice much of a performance loss i haven't um, as far as like durability goes and then as far as the handles go uh, the sc6 is one of the downright most comfortable knives to hang on to for a long or extended period of use at least from se's collection or from se the knives to choose from se even with this flat slab micarta is still super comfy and i do really love this handle shape so between that and its very useful overall size this is one heck of a survival knife and honestly very hard to beat not to mention two your sheath also comes in a wide variety or your sheath is able to be mounted in a wide variety of ways. I have mine kind of set up as a scout so you can carry this like on the small of your back and draw it out. But uh, you can run this, you know, horizontally scout style or really any way you want. You can run with tech locks. I have these uh, little belt loops on here, but you know, you can choose whichever way you want to run it. So that is the SE6. It is a really hard to beat survival knife. All right, talking about bushcrafting or wilderness living blades, for a moment, we're going to talk about the Bark River Knives Bravo 1. Now, there are two Bark Rivers in this lineup, but that is because genuinely Bark River, regardless to all of the controversy, in my personal opinion and in my personal experience, Bark Rivers have always treated me very well, and I've had a handful of them throughout my time, and of course, you know, the Bravo one being one of them, and I think that for a smaller survival blade and for wilderness living, the Bravo one is very tough to beat it has a very long very um has a very long very sweeping convex grind which ultimately leads to a blade that is nearly a quarter inch thick in size or in thickness but yet very slicey and very thin at the edge so this is going to be a really good combination of being able to do things like feather stick very well and very reliably but also do harder wearing tasks like batoning that's probably one of my favorite things about the convex grind and why um, bark river chose to go with the convex grind for this knife was so that they could have that good equal balance of slicey performance and uh, hard wearing durability so bravo one is the next choice up these are not super cheap but they are really worth it and the other cool thing about most spark river products including the bravo one is it is available in a wide variety of different blade steels so this is a two it's pretty plain jane but you can get cpm 
3V, S35VN, Crew Air, um, all kinds of steels. So if you want a steel that is more corrosion resistant, more hard wearing, um, you can get a steel that is more tailored to your specific applications. Yeah, this, uh, the, Chris Reeve, the Chris Reeve knife specific is just an awesome, well-rounded survival blade and even field knife for bushcrafting use and is honestly about the perfect size for just about any situation. So it is an awesome blade and it does make it into a lot of videos, but it is definitely worth it. So that is the next one. Last one up on the list and probably my heaviest recommend and my largest go-to after many, many years still is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. I might replace it one year, but the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter has been with me for a very long time. I've had multiple iterations because I did originally, or I sold my original, bought this one, and it stays with me now and until forever so this is the bark river knives bushcrafter it is awesome it is completely cool and i really do love this blade to the moon and back essentially and honestly i think the biggest thing i love about it is that i have so much experience with this blade doing a wide variety of survival and bushcrafting tasks and any type of task that i might run into i know i can handle with this blade now why this is an awesome knife for other people in general i would say is because it has super well-rounded ergonomics very comfortable to hold on to with its coke bottle shaped um, handle or that's its handle shape I should say and then that convex or scandivex convex scandy grind it makes it a really well suited blade for a wide variety of tasks in the wilderness whether it's skinning animals uh, making firewood it's also at a really perfect thickness it's about 5 30 seconds of an inch thick and its size is just about perfect it's not too small not too large and while for strict survival tasks and such it might be a little bit small, but for general wilderness purposes, it is really in that sweet spot. So lastly, to top it all off, there are a few different steel options to go for, but the CPM 3V that uh, comes standard on these guys, it's probably one of the best steels out there, especially for wilderness applications, because it is extremely tough and very hard wearing. It is literally impossible to break this blade. And um, yeah, it's going to perform for a very, very long time. So that is the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Last one up on the list, and an honorable mention essentially is going to be the Falcon Even A1. Now this isn't on the proper list because I think that the knives mentioned before it offer either better value or better performance. However, it is worth noting that the uh, Falcon Even A1 is a very solid knife. It uses a um, laminated VG10 blade that once again, similar to the Bark River Knives Bravo 1, is a very well convex ground down to that edge, making the very cutting edge very sharp, very slicey, but still leaving a very robust quarter inch thick piece of steel. And so this knife is really capable. You can beat the tar out of it and it will work perfectly fine. And I think the biggest point that I love about the A1 from Falkneven is that it is genuinely probably out of all the knives mentioned most well suited to cold environments and you know like wintertime operations because it has a fully rubberized handle. All the other knives mentioned you know have I think actually micarta on all of them and of course those are all full tang blades so you have the tang sticking out you know throughout the handle itself and when you hold it in a cold environment that steel does feel very cold whereas with the uh, a1 from falkneven it has this nice rubberized handle so you are not going to feel the cold as severely in addition to um, because of its heft and its thickness being the thickest of the mentioned blades it is a very good very choppy blade and and it's convex kind of complements that because once again, you have a very thick, very heavy blade, but a very thin, very slicey edge. So when you do dig this into wood, when you're chopping, it digs deep and it bites hard. So th those are some of the things I like about the Falkneven A1 the most. Now it is not a cheap blade at all. And that's why, once again, it's on the honorable mentions list because I think the knives mentioned um, before this one offer either better price points or better performance and 
subsequently better values than the A1, but the A1 really is a venerable knife, especially if you're looking for a knife that you can take into a cold environment. I think that's the biggest advantage of the A1 is it has a very good um, cold performance to it. So anyways, guys, that is the list of top wilderness blades for this year.